but this is talking about crossing over from death to life which is a, a crossing over from condemnation crossing over from eternal damnation in hell the second death what the bible calls the second death in revelation crossing over from the second death to eternal life to be with jesus in heaven that's what verse 24 and 25 is talking about but 26 to 30 is talking about rising from the grave literal resurrection coming out of the grave from grave to life and i of course this is also death to life but i call it grave to life to just make the distinction uh, between the first and the second the first is spiritual where you're crossing over from death to life to go on to eternal life because everyone is going to be risen again is going to be resurrected again all the graves are going to open up one day and jesus comes a second time and then the dead in christ will rise first and they will live the bible says those who have done good will will receive life but those who have done what is evil will, will rise to be condemned in hell eternally they will be tormented day and night eternally this is a horrible thing that's why we're talking about who jesus is that's why we want to help people know that jesus loves them and jesus does not want to, want them to die and go to eternal damnation in hell that's why we're proclaiming the gospel you see uh, going back to verse 24 and 25 you see the whole focus there is believing whoever hears my word and believes him who sent me has eternal life and will not be judged in other words will not be condemned will not be doomed to eternal damnation now what has made the crossover for us is faith is believing on the lord jesus and so it's important your faith is important your faith is key for crossing over from death to life how good is it that god has made it so easy for us amen hallelujah but then it was not easy for him it was difficult for him he went the hard way he paid the price it was a you know hard thing for him to go through suffering and death and tormentation of physical pain and the sins of all of mankind came upon him your sin and my sin was laid upon him and he suffered the punishment for all of our sins it was a difficult path but yet he made it you know gave it to us free of cost but it is not cheap Amen. Hallelujah. Very often whatever you get free is usually cheap. Buy one, get one free. But what you get the next one free is sometimes not so as good as the one you paid for. <laughs> you know, it's very often it's something very simple, it's something very, you know, uh very very fragile, something that will not last too long. But with Jesus what he gave to us free is costly, but it's not free. It, it's not cheap. and it's free to us amen and so the lord you know calls us to cross over from death to life by just believing in him now a lot of people will say i believe in jesus <laughs> everybody you know even those who really don't follow jesus or who don't call themselves to be fully devoted followers of christ do believe in jesus in some way they believe in jesus in the existence of jesus they believe in the divinity of jesus they believe in the birth of jesus in the life of jesus in the death and resurrection of jesus also they just believe but it's a very passive belief but that faith that belief has not taken any effect on their lives but look at what jesus is saying in john chapter 5 in verses 36 to 40 the same chapter verse 36 to 40 let's read i have testimony weightier than that of john for the works that the father has given me to finish the very works that i am doing testify that the father has sent me and the father who sent me has himself testified concerning me you have never heard his voice nor seen his form nor does his word dwell in you for you do not believe the one he sent you study the scriptures diligently because you think that in them you have eternal life these are the very scriptures that testify about me yet you receive you refuse to come to me to have life oh these people the jewish people they knew the old testament scriptures and the scriptures did point to the messiah it pointed you know everything that you find in every book of the old testament has something to talk about the coming messiah in the law and the prophets and the psalms you find the revelation of the messiah and the messiah is has come jesus the savior has come but yet these disciples uh these these people the jewish people not the disciples sorry the jewish people did not accept jesus as the messiah you find in this place that jesus is saying 
in verse number 36 uh, 37 yes 37 and the father who sent me has himself testified concerning me you have never heard his voice nor seen his form nor does his word dwell in you for you do not believe in the one he sent you study the scriptures diligently because you think that in them you in them you have eternal life these are the very scriptures that testify about me verse 40 yet you refuse to come to me to have life you see they do read the scriptures but yet what has happened verse 37 he says you have not heard his voice you have not seen his form nor does his word dwell in you even though you read the word diligently yet and you think that in it there is eternal life here yes, there is eternal life but eternal life is in the one who is coming which about whom it is written in the scriptures they are reading the scriptures but they have not recognized the one who is in the scriptures who has come who is standing before them do you get it and the one who is standing before them is saying come to me and through me they will be you will receive eternal life but yet they are not willing to receive him and so just crossing over from death to life involves believing but believing of course involves also you know believing and entering into this relationship with this god who where you will begin to hear his voice where you begin to see his form not necessarily you may not see him physically or you may not see him you know as a vision some of us might have received a vision probably some of you maybe many of you have not received a vision of jesus or anything like that but yet you know you recognize him you know his form in your heart in your spirit you are able to recognize that jesus is there you experience his presence you experience his power you experience his, you, you experience the reality of the person of christ you recognize that in your spirit you see him you see his form in your spiritual eyes and and his word lives in you you his word is alive his word is applied in your life you you're living by the teachings of scriptures and uh, you have recognized him this way you you although though you read the scriptures diligently but yes some of us have come to this next level of crossing over from death to life by you know recognizing him by experiencing him by personally relating with him by hearing his voice and uh, seeing him in our spiritual eyes and like, recognizing him in our spirit and where you begin to follow him completely where his dwell his uh, his word dwells in your hearts now now that's the that's the area where the jewish people lacked now they were reading the scriptures but yet they did not recognize him yet they did not accept him yet they did not come into a relationship with him yes they did not believe in him who is the messiah why because they as they read, read the scriptures they ha- they pictured the messiah in a certain way but here comes the messiah who is very different from what they imagined or they thought the messiah will be like one of them who will be a king who will be a religious leader who will come wearing a long robe who will have long tassels and who will come and who will have the same kind of life that they live they thought they will the messiah will be like one of them but here comes a messiah who is not part of that hypocritical life that they are living here comes a messiah who is not a political deliverer here comes a messiah who is not a king who is going on war and he is not carrying a sword he doesn't have an army but here is a king who is humbly born you know in a very obscure place who has no prominence who has no name or fame who is going around you know in a simple way and has very simple ordinary people a uh, 12 of them following him and many of them fishermen here is a messiah who is very looking very different from the messiah that they were imagining to have and so it was very difficult for them to believe in the one who came and so because of the of the, all of the legalism and because of all of the you know hypocrisy and because of all of those things that they that were there in their lives they could not see jesus they could not hear his voice they could not recognize him they could not come into a relationship with him they could not believe in him they could not receive him and even though they just believed that the messiah will come even though they were diligently reading the scriptures and even today if you go to israel you will see around the western wall people carrying the torah and knocking their heads on the wall and you know they will be rocking themselves like this and reading the you know old testament scriptures very diligently but they they do not believe the one who came and died and rose again in their own land because they are having a struggle and this is a struggle this is a struggle the struggle is that even though they study the scriptures diligently 
and by that they think they have they will have eternal life they refuse to believe christ through whom they will have eternal life which the scriptures reveal they read the scriptures they don't recognize the person who is standing before them who is revealed in the scriptures there's a diligent pursuit of the truth but an unwillingness to believe and follow the truth whatever the scripture is saying in whatever form we it might be in whatever way they need to believe they were not willing to believe they read about christ in the old testament but do not accept him in the form they saw him it was a struggle for them he did not fit into their religious cultural framework because jesus was like fish out of water because whatever jesus said was so radical the way jesus lived was so radical he would go into a sinner's house and eat with them the pharisees would frown at him and say how is he eating with sinners he's a glutton and jesus would say it's the sick who need a doctor is a sinner who needs to be righteous i did not come for the righteous i came for the sinners and so he would go into the house of tax collectors sinners he would meet with prostitutes he would meet with samaritans who were considered outcasts he was doing things that were so different from what the pharisees and the religious people of the day and the jewish people you know were you know doing and the way they saw the the world and they saw scriptures jesus was like fish out of water he was a normal human being like anybody he was not carrying himself you know with an air around him and he did not need a, a whole you know chariots of horses you know riding before him when he would enter a town but he would go riding humbly on a colt of a donkey 